we talked about relative velocity, so now it's time to talk about relative acceleration. What if we know the acceleration of one point? Using that, our goal is to figure out the acceleration of another point. To do that, we can use this equation. We can also figure out angular acceleration or even angular velocity using it. This will make a lot more sense when we do examples. But before we do that, some of the questions in this chapter will ask you to find the velocity along with the acceleration. So to do that, you can use the relative velocity equation or the instantaneous center of zero velocity to figure it out. If you're unfamiliar with those, please check the description. Also, don't forget these, which are the cross products of unit vectors. Just a quick recap, to find a velocity when something is going through rotation about a fixed axis, we can use this equation, and for acceleration, we use this equation. Again, if these are unfamiliar to you, please see the video on rotation about a fixed axis since we need those to complete the problems in this chapter. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's take a look at this example where we need to find the velocity and acceleration of slider block C. First, we will focus on getting the velocity and then we will do the acceleration. We can figure out the velocity at point B for the link AB by multiplying the angular velocity by the distance from points A to B. Let's draw a free body diagram of link BC along with the velocity vector, which is perpendicular to link AB. We can now draw the velocity vector from point C, which will be along the x-axis since the slider is fixed onto a bar. We need to figure out the instantaneous center of zero velocity. I'm going to go through these steps fast because in the previous video, I go through how to find it step by step. So now we can draw perpendicular radial lines to these velocity vectors to figure out the IC point. Using the triangle we formed, we can figure out the angles inside. Now we can figure out the lengths by using the law of sines. Using these lengths, we can figure out the angular velocity of link BC. Don't forget, we already found the velocity at point B. Now that we know the angular velocity, we can figure out the velocity of the slider C. Solving gives us the velocity. Now we can focus on the new stuff, which is to find the acceleration of slider C. Just like how we found the velocity of point B first, we need to find the acceleration of point B. To do that, we need to use this equation. This equation should be familiar to you from the section on rotation about a fixed axis. Let's plug in the values we know and we're going to keep everything in Cartesian form. So we have the angular acceleration of 6 rads per second squared, which is about the z-axis, and then we have the position vector RAB, which we can break into two components using the 45 degree angle given to us. The angular velocity is 4 rads per second and it's the same position coordinate. Let's simplify. Don't forget what happens when we take cross product of unit vectors. So k cross i gives us j and k cross j gives us negative i. Now that we know the acceleration at point b, we can use that and the relative acceleration equation to figure out the velocity at point c. Let's draw another free body diagram for link bc, this time showing the acceleration vectors. Let's also draw the angular velocity of link bc we found earlier. Now we can plug in the values we know. Let's go through this equation. So on the left side, we have the acceleration vector, which is pointing straight to the left, so it only has an x component. On the other side, we have the acceleration at point B, which we already found. Then we can add the angular acceleration of link BC, which we will assume to be clockwise. So it's going to be about the negative z axis. Then we cross multiply with the position vector from B to C which we can express as components like this using the 60 degree angle given to us. We then subtract the angular velocity of link BC that we found before and multiply it by the position vector from B to C. While this seems long and tedious, we're just plugging values in. Let's simplify. Now we can equate I components and J components. Solving the two equations gives us our answer. In this problem, we need to determine the acceleration of point C. The first step is to figure out the acceleration at the center of the disk. We can do that by multiplying the angular acceleration of the disk by the radius. Now we can use the relative acceleration equation to figure out the acceleration at point C. 
Before we plug values in, let's draw a free body diagram of the disk with the acceleration vector and we will pick up and to the right to be positive. Note that the acceleration vector at the center points straight ahead. Now let's plug values in. So for the acceleration at the center, it's along the negative x-axis since we chose up and to the right to be positive. The angular acceleration is counterclockwise, so it's along the positive z-axis. And then we cross multiply that with a position vector from the center to point C, which can be written in Cartesian form with the 45 degree angle given to us. Then we have the angular velocity multiplied by the position vector. Let's simplify. Now let's add the same components together. We now have the acceleration in Cartesian vector form, but we need the magnitude of it. Just finding the magnitude isn't enough. We actually need to give an angle for the answer to be complete. To find it, all we need to do is take the tan inverse. So the answer to our question is both of these pieces. Let's take a look at this example involving a wheel and a slider. In this problem, we need to find the angular velocity and the angular acceleration of the wheel. Let's focus on the wheel and draw a free body diagram. The velocity vector has to be straight down at point A since that's where the link is connected. We also have an acceleration vector at A, which we will assume is towards slot B. First, we will figure out the velocity and then we will figure out the acceleration. So for velocity at point A, we can write an equation like this. That's the angular velocity of the wheel multiplied by the distance from the center to point A. Let's now draw a free body diagram for link AB. So we have the velocity vector coming straight down and the velocity at point B must be straight to the right since the slider is locked onto a bar. Now we can draw two lines perpendicular to these velocity vectors and wherever they cross is the IC point. We don't need to calculate any angles in this triangle because we have all the lengths given to us. So from B to IC is 0.4 meters and from A to IC it's 0.3 meters since it's the diameter of the wheel. Now we can figure out the angular velocity of link AB. So the velocity at point B is equal to the angular velocity of the link AB multiplied by the distance from B to C. We're given the velocity at point B, so let's plug in what we know and solve for the angular velocity. Next, we can find the angular velocity of the wheel. Remember, we already figured out VA before, so we need to plug it in and we also just found the angular velocity of the link AB. Solving gives us the angular velocity of the wheel. Let's focus on the acceleration now. So first, we will calculate the acceleration at point A using this equation. The distance from A to the center is 0.15 meters. And don't forget, we found the angular velocity of the wheel, so we can plug that in as well. The next step is to use the relative acceleration equation to figure out the angular acceleration of the wheel. Let's go through this equation. On the left side, we have the acceleration at point B, which is given to us in the question. And then on the right, we have the acceleration at point A, which we found before. The angular acceleration of link AB is next, which is then cross multiplied by the position vector from A to B. We then have the angular velocity of the link, which we found before, which is then multiplied by the position vector from A to B. Let's simplify by doing the cross product and adding the same components together. We can now equate the components. Let's solve the two equations to get our answer. We get a negative value for the angular acceleration of link AB, which means the acceleration is clockwise. Those are our answers. I hope this video helped and made things clear for you. Thanks for watching and best of luck with your studies.